We're in London for the Linux Foundation's Open Networking and Edge Summit. I'm here with Dr. Masahisa Kawashima. He's the ION Technology Director at the NTT Corp and Chair of the Technology Working Group at the ION Global Forum. Uh, Dr. Kawashima, thank you very much for joining thank us. Thank you Good very to much see for having you. me. So can you just give us a high level overview of the ION Global Forum uh, and just explain what is ION all about? Okay, so ION stands for Innovative Optical and Wireless Network, and we are uh, trying to develop next generation computing and networking infrastructure, taking advantage of the recent evolution of optical communication technologies. Uh, the reason why we are doing this activity is now societies want infrastructures more uh, resilient, and also a more energy efficient. And at the same time, we want infrastructure to support data-driven societies. So we have to move data very efficiently. So today's packet networks are very good at, uh, to enhance security and uh, resiliency with some SDN type operation, but they are not good at moving large data energy efficiently. So what we are trying to do at ION Global Forum is to develop op optical transport, which is very energy efficient by nature, but at the same time, which can be operated with SDN applications. This is a one adv advancement what we are trying to achieve at ION Global Forum. As a result, societies will be able to build AI uh, infrastructure, connecting customer sites with AI computing data centers, with high-speed, low-latency, energy-efficient connections. So essentially what we're talking about here is all optical networking, end-to-end -end optical uh, yeah. connectivity. But is that something that's actually possible in wide area networks today? Today, uh, with uh, DW transceivers, well, we can send uh, the data uh, over 100 kilometers. And uh, uh, one of the issues is cost, but uh, uh, we believe that uh, uh, we can start with connecting uh, data centers and some uh, large customer sites like uh, uh, industrial research parks or some large enterprise campuses. That should work. So we will go through a step-by-step -step evolution, but, uh, uh, but uh, back to your question, of course, APN can be applied to, uh, to a one-scale operation. And in terms of the kind of uh, optical technologies that we would be used here you're talking about the the new generation of pluggable optics is yeah. that right yes so today uh dw transceivers have become pluggable and can be installed into customer routers and some industry uh, have started defining uh, open standards for such transceivers such as open zr plus and so on so with those transceivers customers can plug transceivers into customers' routers. So uh, we are trying to develop a new network that embraces this industry trend. Can you tell us about some of the use cases for this uh, all optical uh, photonic network right now? I mean, what kind of companies might be able to make use of this kind of setup um, you know, in 2025? Okay, uh, uh, now uh, at ION Global Forum, uh, uh, we are trying to promote three use cases. One is the financial service institutes. Typically, financial service institutes would like, should operate a pair of data centers and let them uh, and let databases to deploy two data centers to two data centers and let them synchronize. And uh, one of the issues with today's situation is that the now banks are struggling with finding additional power or additional space in financial districts. So what we are trying to solve with, uh, what we are trying to achieve is to solve this problem by applying APN so that banks can utilize data centers a little bit different from traditional financial district, but connect such uh, distant data centers with ION APN and can uh, let the databases, uh, distributed databases, synchronize. Okay. This is one use case. 
And the second use case is remote video production. So, so TV broadcasters uh, would like to do live feed of sports game or musical concerts and so on. But today, they have to send a large truck to the event venue to do the editing. But sending, this is very costly. So what we are trying to achieve with ION APN is to enable TV broadcasters to gather videos over the APN and let uh, TV broadcasters do editing at the crowd site so that they don't have to send trucks to event venue. Okay. So this is the second use case. And the third use case is, of course, AI. So many enterprises want to uh, develop AI-powered products or services. But one of the issues is how, to, how they can get AI computing resources for their AI product service development. So what we would do with ION APN is to connect such enterprises, product or service development sites with AI computing data centers over ION APN so that enterprises can use GPU resources on an as-a-service basis. That would help them accelerate the enterprise's AI product or service development. So that's the third use case. And are these use cases just theoretical at the moment, or are there any companies actually putting these into use today? Oh, great. That's a great question. So at ION Global Forum, we have many members from the technology user side, for example, for financial service, institute, for financial service use case, uh, we have Mitsubishi UFJ Group, Mitsubishi UFJ Financial Group, uh, to define the key requirements and the uh, KPI for our technology experiments. So this is a, a unique process of ION Global Forum. So we invite the members from the technology user side and develop, define key requirements and KPI, and then develop technology collaboratively. So for, for, remote video for remote video production, we have Sony, and also uh, we have TBS as a good advisor for our use case activity. TBS is Japanese TV broadcast. Okay. And uh, for uh, AI uh, products, no. for remote uh, GPU use case, uh, we have several uh, industry companies who are participating in this POC project. So what needs to happen next to uh, advance um, this uh, approach to, to networking. Are, are there a lot of uh, companies globally uh, working as part of the forum to, to advance this, or do you need more companies to get involved? Uh, we have many uh, telecom service providers uh, in the world. Uh, for example, Orange and Telefonica and British Telecom are members of the Iron Grover Forum. So I would say what happens next is to uh, do what we do in Japan, I mean, what NTT does in Japan. Uh, so ask uh, Oren uh, to have other telecom providers outside of Japan to do the same thing okay. in, outside of Japan. And when do you think that might start to happen? Is this something that they're trialing already or is there a timeline for, for these kind of things to happen beyond Japan? I'm hoping that that will happen in this year or next year. Okay. They are now interested in the result of uh, our POC activity. And uh, I think I, I see that the many uh, telecom service providers outside of Japan are now showing more interests in our activity in ION Global Forum APN. So. Well, I mean, this is a very interesting development and obviously, you know, links very closely with the increasing use of uh, AI yes, and yes. the development of uh, GPU as a service for, yes. for, for many companies. So uh, good timing for the ION Global Forum, I would say, and I look forward to uh, chatting again in the future and finding out how this is developing. Dr. Kawashima, thank you very much. Thank for you time. very much. Thank you.